Greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul. I'd like to welcome you today to the internet broadcast of Albany Family Worship Center. Albany Family Worship Center is located at 3024 Kensington Court in Albany, Georgia. Our service times are Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship. I hope this message encourages you today and draws you ever closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day and always remember this, Jesus loves you. It's one thing to have faith to get saved. It's something completely different to have crazy faith to see miracles take place. To see deliverances take place. To see provision take place. It takes crazy faith. So if everybody will go to Matthew chapter 14, I want you to find verse 22. Uh, Jesus has just fed the 5,000 men with, with five loaves and two little fishes. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people don't understand it was more than just 5,000 people. It was 5,000 men plus women and children. So there's probably 15,000 people there that he fed with five loaves of bread and two little old bitty dried fish. And they say after everybody had eaten their full, somebody say full. Oh. After everybody had eaten their full, not a morsel, uh, not a crumb, but had eaten their full eating all they wanted. They were satisfied. How many know that Jesus was satisfied? Amen. They were satisfied. He sent the disciples back out amongst them and, 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 and collected 12 baskets of leftovers. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that, that's, that's, that's awesome to me. Amen. I mean, can you imagine the crowd of people and, 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 and he fed them all with five little loaves and two little dried fish and then took up leftovers. Amen. How many know there's no waste with God? Amen. There's no waste with God. Well, that's what is taking place. We're going to begin in chapter, uh, we're going to begin with verse 22 of chapter 14. And if everybody's there, say amen. amen. Let's, if you would, let's stand out of reverence for reading the word of God this morning. We're going to read down through verse number uh, 32. We'll read 33, so from 22 to 33. You ready? Here we go. And straightway, Jesus constrained. That word constrained means that he, comp he compelled or he commanded them. And straightway, Jesus constrains his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side, the other side of the Sea of Galilee, uh, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain part, a mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the winds were contrary. In other words, there was a storm going on. How many of you got a storm going on? Come on now, somebody talk to the preacher this morning. Uh, there was a storm going on. The, the boat was being tossed with the waves. For the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, about three o'clock in the morning, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. You know, when Jesus begins to show up and show out in our life and show his mighty power, sometimes it troubles us, amen? Because we don't understand exactly what's going on. And they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit or it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, right away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it, if thou, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind bosterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, uh, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that when the ship came and worshipped him, of a truth thou art the Son of God. So saith the word of God. Today. Father, bless the reading of this word. Father, use this living and powerful word to impact our lives right now, to build up 
our crazy faith. Holy Spirit, take control in this place today. Let everything we say and do honor and glorify our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, now give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive what you have in store for us today. And Father, as I stand before you right now, I just ask you to take control of me. First and foremost, Lord, heal my body. Touch me right now with your supernatural touch and heal me, Father. Uh, Father, I ask this morning, as I bring this word, as I humble myself under your mighty hand, that you would allow your words to be my words, your thoughts, my thoughts. Your love in my heart, Jesus, that it flows out and touches everyone under the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, take control of me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and say, we love you, Jesus. Come on now. We love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated and let's give God a hand clap of praise today. Amen. Crazy faith. That's what was taking place this night on the Sea of Galilee. Was crazy faith. You see, crazy faith believes the impossible. I want to say that again. Crazy faith believes God, believes Jesus for the impossible. You know, there's a lot of things that go on in our life and people tell us, well, that's impossible. Uh, that, 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 that's just, that just can't be. Uh, there's no way that can happen. And then, then God shows up and shows out and He shows them the impossible. Amen? Matthew, 12, Matthew 14, 26 through 29 says, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, right away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee under water. 29, and he said, come, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you something. About it. People are telling you that it's impossible to walk on water. You ever tried it? I have. You sink real quick. Amen? But, but Peter, Peter, he believed that was Jesus coming to him, and he wanted proof, and he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. Uh, Jesus said, come. Peter, listen, he got out of a perfectly good boat. He stepped over the side of that boat, and he began to walk on the water to go to Jesus. Number one, he had crazy faith to believe in Jesus. Number two, he was obeying the voice of the Lord his God. Now listen to this. They were 12 men in that boat. But only one had crazy enough faith to get out in the middle of that sea. Hello? Uh, sometimes it takes, it, listen, sometimes you just got to make up your mind that you're going to believe God for the impossible regardless of what everybody else is saying, regardless of what you see in. Amen? You just got to just throw your hands up and trust God. Have crazy faith to know that nothing is impossible for God. See, because crazy faith knows that there is nothing too hard for our God. Amen. Hello? See, He's a powerful God. He's, not, he, he's a boundless God. He's a wonderful God. He's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. He's a rescuing God. He's a healing God. Amen. He's a providing God. And you've got to have crazy enough faith to just believe in Him with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. What the world says is impossible, God says is possible. Amen. Am I getting through somebody this morning? Say amen. amen. It says in Jeremiah 32, 17, O Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Do you tell God that? Do you look to God when you're praying and say, God, I know that nothing's impossible for you, that nothing's too hard for you, and right now i got crazy enough faith, despite what's going on, despite what everybody is saying, I'm going to trust in you. Do you do that? Do you look to God and lay it all in His? Do you put all your eggs in one basket and lay it at the foot of the cross? Or do you hold something back? You let fear come in and, and, and dictate to you how you're going to respond to your God and save you, Jesus. Hello, I'm talking to somebody now. Do you allow fear and doubt to, to dictate your response? We should never do that. 
Our response to Jesus should be crazy faith. Faith that believes Him for whatever we need. I, I, I like the way a professor once described it to me, the name Yahweh, or uh, the great I am. It means that I am who you need me to be in the greatest hour of your need. See, that's who God is. He is the God that is what He is the God that we need in the hour of our need. He can be all things to us, amen? But we just got to have crazy enough faith to trust Him. Luke one thirty seven says this, For with God, nothing, somebody say nothing. nothing. You know what that means? You know what that word nothing means? Zero. Nothing. Nada. Not a thing in the world. Nothing, listen, nothing shall be impossible with God. God can do anything. The problem is we don't trust Him enough. See, we can go with God as far as, as, far as we are allowing to let our faith take us. Do you hear what I'm saying to you this morning? You can go, you can go just two steps or you can go all the way. When you have crazy enough faith to be totally dependent on God and know that nothing impossible for Him. You see, the God that raised the dead, the God that healed the sick, the God that gives sight to the blind, who calls the deaf to hear, who give, who give words to the mute, uh, who made the lame to walk, who provided uh, for the for the 5,000, is the same God then, is the same God we serve today. He hasn't changed. He says in the book of Malachi, I am the Lord, I change not. Well, what's the problem then? We've changed. Hello? We've changed. We're not, we're not trusting God like we're supposed to. We're not walking by crazy faith. Because it's the same God then as it is now. The same God now as it was then. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I am the Lord, I change not, He said. And if He can do it then, He can do it now. You see, it takes crazy faith. Somebody say, I got crazy faith. It takes crazy faith to see miracles take place in your life. It says, it says in Mark 9, 23, and Jesus says unto them, If thou canst believe... That is, have faith. That is crazy faith. If thou can't believe, all things. Somebody say all things. all things. All things are possible to him. Talking about the individual, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl. To him that believe it. That is, have crazy faith. What do you believe in God for? Hello? What do you need today? What are you looking for? Are you looking to God to supply for your need according to His riches and glory? Are you letting the world dictate, uh, letting your doubt dictate, letting your fear dictate how you respond to God in faith? I'm talking to somebody now. Talking to me too, praise God. Because you've got to have crazy faith to see miracles take place in your life. Jesus said, if you have faith as big as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto the mountain before you, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall, it shall remove, because nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's not me speaking, that's the Bible speaking, the words are in the red, so that's Jesus talking. Jesus said it, I believe it. Amen? Amen? There's nothing impossible for our God today, but it takes crazy faith to believe Him for it. It takes somebody that is willing to be labeled a, a nut job. It takes somebody willing to be labeled, uh, they've been calling Christians mentally ill. Well, guess what? If I'm mentally ill, I'm mentally ill with Jesus. Amen? Yeah. He's got control of my mind. I believe Him. I trust in Him. I look to Him for all things in my life. Amen? When I was at the doctor's office the other day, I said, Doctor, I'm going to tell you something now. I told you before, I'm going to tell you again, uh, I, I respect you, I'll take the medicine you give me, but my dependency is going to be on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? He's the one I'm leaning on for my healing. He's the one I'm leaning on for my provision. He's the one I'm leaning on to lift me above the flood. Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you've got to be willing to trust Him. The second thing you need to know is this. Crazy faith takes you out of your comfort zone. Hello? One person agreed with me. 
Crazy faith can make, make you get out of, up off of your comfortable uh -huh, and start walking by faith and not by sight. You know, we have a tendency to get settled and get established. And we tend to, we tend to get, all our, get all our ducks in a row. We don't like nobody to rock our boat. Am I the only one who don't like nobody to rock my boat? I like things to go a certain way. Now, I done thought about it. I done prayed over it. This is the way I want to go. But you know what? God will make you get out of your comfort zone. God will get you out of that place where you feel secure. Because, because as long as you're in that place of comfort, as long as you're in that place of security, you know what? You're not really dependent on God. Oh, you've given Him some lip service. Hello? But when He brings you out of that comfort zone, when he brings you out of where you feel, where you feel most at ease, to get you to start walking by faith and not by sight. Because you know what? The things of the Spirit are contrary to your flesh. Amen. Amen? And he'll bring you out of that comfort zone. He'll bring, listen, you must be willing to believe Jesus beyond what is normal or what the world calls normal. Amen? You've got to be willing, you've got to be willing to, to believe Jesus despite what we perceive in this natural world. Because Jesus is contrary to the things of this world. Amen? Matthew 14, 29 says, And he said, Come, talking about Jesus, told Peter, he said, Come, and listen to what Peter did. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, now listen to this, listen to this. He was in a, in a perfectly good boat. All the, all the, it was a storm going on, but he was in that boat and he was pretty secure. Amen? And then Jesus said, come, and he got out of that boat. He got out of his comfort zone. He got out of what we perceive, perceive as a safety zone. And he began to walk on the water to go with Jesus. Let me ask you something. Have you heard God say, step out of your boat and come? Well, if you have, have you, have you done what he said to do? Have you took a step of faith and began to walk toward Jesus? Or are you still trying to rely on what you think is safe? On what you, where your comfort is? Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? You've got to be willing to take a step of crazy faith. When it comes to walking by crazy faith, you cannot depend on what you see or what the world considers comfortable thinking, but on what Jesus can do, Jesus will do, and what He commands us to do. Amen? Jeremiah 32, 37, it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? You need to be careful when you answer that, because you need to mean it when you answer it. Amen? If you tell God, yes, God, there's nothing impossible for you, there's nothing too hard for you, you better mean what you say, because God will test you. Hello? God will make you put your money where your mouth is. Amen? He's going to see if you're, going to, if you're actually going to lean on Him with all your understanding. Praise God. Because He, won't, he, you know, he already knows that He wants you to know. Hello? He wants you to know. He wants you to know that you can do it through Him. He wants you to know that when you depend on Him completely for all things, everything works out. Hello? You've got to have crazy. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to be radical in your thinking. You've got to be radical in your speaking, in your, in your preaching, your speaking. And you've got to be radical in your believing. You've got to go beyond. You know, there's a the, the thing that's been going around for many, many years called cessationism. It means that, it, that the miracles of God have ceased. That they no longer take place. A lot better to differ. They do. God still works miracles today. The problem is you got to believe. Amen. you got to have crazy faith. you got to trust God. Amen. Even when it don't look good. Even when the storm's raging. Even when the winds blow. Even when it, 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 you're down to your last dollar, don't know where you're going to get another. You've got to have crazy enough faith to get out of your comfort zone and trust God. You've got to be radical. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10. But is it written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has provided, has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed him unto us by his spirit. Hello? By his spirit. So you can't walk by crazy faith unless the spirit takes control. Amen. Hello? 
You can't walk, you can't walk by faith and not by sight unless the Spirit's in control. The Holy Ghost has got to be in control. But you know, so all the time we like we we don't mind we don't mind God the Father, we don't mind God the Son, but you know, uh uh that God the Holy Ghost. You know, we have a tendency just to kind of kind of want to put him in the back pocket and only let him out when we think we need something. No, he's got to be in control all the time. He's the one that's got to lead God and direct us. Because we'll never understand, understand the thing, understand the things of God, yet the deep things of God unless the Holy Spirit reveal them to us. See, the things of God are spiritual. And they got to be spiritually discerned. And the natural man, the unregenerate man, the doubting man, the man that's not filled by the Spirit, can't understand the things of God. Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? That scripture says, I have not seen, nor ear heard what God has in store for me. Why do you think I always pray, Lord, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive? I want to know. I don't want to have to guess. And it might bring me out of my comfort zone. It might take me out of where I feel, where I feel safe at. But you know what? I'm going to trust God and do it anyway. Yeah. Peter was in that boat. He could have stayed there. He'd have been all right. But when Jesus said, come, he stepped out. Are you stepping out? Have you got out and walking on the water with Jesus today? Step out of your comfort zone. Ephesians 5, 18 says these words, but be not drunk with wine wherein is accent, but be filled, but be filled. Somebody say, I got to get fooled up. You got to get fooled up. You got to get filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Spirit. Let Him have control. Amen. Don't reject Him. You know, so many people reject the Holy Spirit. That's a dangerous place to be. Because the Bible says this, that any, any sin committed against the Son of God, the Son of Man, will be forgiven him. But blasphemy against the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven. Amen? You've got to be careful. Hello? You've got to be careful. Let him have control. Let him fill you up. Let him be the one that's in control of your life. Because crazy faith takes you out of your comfort zone. And guess what? Sometimes when we're walking by crazy faith, we struggle. Crazy faith sometimes struggles. It's not always easy. That's how you tell. That's how you can tell who's sincere and who's not. Amen. Because those that are not so sincere, they'll give up. They'll turn and walk away. But those that are sincere, even though they're struggling, even though it's not easy, they still. Walking by crazy faith and not by sight. They're trusting in God completely. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? You've got to be willing to go through the struggle. Uh, when, Peter, when Jesus told Peter to come, Peter stepped out of that boat and he began to walk on that water until... Listen to what verse, 20, uh, verse 30 said. But when he saw the wind was boxed. When he saw that there was a storm raging. See, up until this time, he'd been focused entirely on Jesus. But when he took his eyes off of Jesus and he looked down at that, at that boil and causing a waves and wind around him and beginning to sink, beginning to sink, he was struggling. And beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. See, that's where some of us fall short in the struggle. We don't call upon the name of the Lord. Hello, somebody. We don't call upon the name of the Lord. We don't have enough crazy faith. We think because we're struggling that God ain't in it. But He is. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He's right there beside you. There will come a time, church, when your crazy faith is going to be tested some way. I don't know how. He's been testing mine through my health. Amen. Amen. Amen? He's been testing me through my health. Because it would have been so easy to throw my hands up and get mad. You know, we have a tendency when God's not doing what we want Him to do, or doing it as fast as we think He ought to do it, we get mad with God. Come on now. Don't look at me so spiritual. You know I'm telling the truth. Any of you ever got mad with God before because things didn't work out your way? Amen. But God was working it out His way. But see, we have a tendency to get mad with God. 
We have a tendency when the struggles come up, when the tests come up, and we think, well, God can't be in this. Yes, He is. He's right there beside you. He's not going to let you go through it by yourself. And if you'll turn to Him, you'll see that He's right there. Sometimes you got to struggle a little bit. Sometimes you got to put a little effort. You just got to put a little effort in. See, He's done saved you. But you got to put a little effort in. Everybody, you know, you know we, we live in an instantaneous world. We got, we got, we can watch on TV and instantly watch movies. Uh, we got instant grits. Got instant coffee. Ooh, nasty stuff. We got, we got cell phones. We instantaneously make contact with anybody in the world if we know the numbers. We got computers, we can instantly find out what the information we need on the internet. Come on now. We live in an instant world. We live in a world that's right now. Hello? And when we begin to when we begin to make our walk with God and we begin to go through the struggles and trials, if God don't remove them instantly or right away, we start getting a little doubtful. Am I talking to somebody? Guess what? That situation you're in, you may not have gotten into it overnight, so you ain't going to get out of it overnight, amen? you got to walk it out by your crazy faith. Am I talking to somebody here this morning? Say amen. amen. you just got to trust God. you just got to walk it out by faith because there's going to come a time when your crazy faith is going to be uh, tested and you will have to make the determined effort of your will to trust in Jesus Christ Completely. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to trust you. That you're not going to turn away. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9 says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively or a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved for you in heaven. If you born, if you're a born again child of God, you're an heir to join heaven with Jesus. You got an inheritance from God, and he's going to give it to you when you need it. You're not out there by yourself. You've got what it takes. Hello. Yeah. I wish I could come out there and scoop the top of your head off and pull this one in. Yeah. You've got what it takes to walk in crazy faith. He give it to you that you got saved. You just got to exercise it. You got to make up your mind. To a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, God keeps me. God keeps me. God watches over you. God, God sees about you. Amen. God, make sure you, you have what you need when you need it. We are kept by the power of God through faith. Unto salvation, that is deliverance or saving or healing, whatever you need, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein we greatly rejoice, though now for a season. Somebody say season. season. That means a time. However short or how long. Well, you know, the, the seasons change, what, about every, about every four months, about every three months? You know, I, I struggle with the trials change. Well, yeah, the trials joined you. You ain't got the only thing you got is winter and summer. Praise God. You know, we don't have we don't have much in between. Praise the Lord. But but that but that but for a season. Somebody say season. season. For a short while. Though that for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold, listen, manifold temptations. You're being tested in Christ. And you know what's the sad is most of us when we start going through stuff like that, we just throw our hands up. We just we ain't we ain't got the bottom to stay for the long run. We won't we won't make up our mind. We're not we, you know to determined to follow God. Well, I done messed up. I might as well go on and keep on keeping on this stuff. No, 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 no. God says turn. Repent. Come to Jesus. Amen. Come to Jesus and trust in Him. Come to Jesus and let Him make it right. Amen. Ask Him to forgive you and He will. Don't get... Hello? Everybody listen to me say amen. amen. Don't give up. Don't 
Don't give up. Let him have his will and his way. Even though you're going through a struggle and it's not easy, don't give up. Testing and trial are for your benefit. They're for your benefit. They help you to become stronger in your crazy faith. If you don't exercise, you, you, you're not going to be in shape. I've got, I'm, I'm up to walking about a mile and a half to a mile and three quarters a day right now. But see, I had to start out slow. I had to start out walking just a quarter of a mile a day. And it's working. I'm, I'm steady losing weight, praise God. When you, when you, you've got to build yourself up. Uh, Jude said, building yourself up on your most holy faith. The more you use it, the stronger it's going to get. And see, we have to use our crazy faith when we're in the midst of struggle and trial. Am I getting through to somebody? Say amen. amen. Why is this happening to me? Because God's trying to make you a better person. He's trying to make you a better child of God. He's trying to make you a crazy faith person. Can somebody hear what I'm saying today? And we just got to trust Him completely because testing a trial before your benefit, they help you become stronger in your crazy faith. James 1, 2, and 2 through 3 says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse uh, temptation. That is various temptation, various trial, various struggle. Knowing this, no. You got to know. It ain't about how you feel. Everybody listen to me say amen. amen. It ain't about what you feel. Ain't about, ain't about your emotions. Um, emotions are up and down. One day I feel good, another day I don't feel good. Amen? I didn't feel like getting up coming to church this morning. I didn't feel like singing this morning. I didn't feel like preaching this morning. Amen? But I know what my God can do. I know how powerful my God is. So I made up my mind I was going to do it. I was going to trust in Him. I was going to watch Him work. I was going to watch Him do what He had to do. I knew that my God was could do it because nothing impossible for my God can do. Somebody giving praise in the house of God today. Quit, quit waiting until you feel like it. Because if you're waiting until you feel like it, you ain't never going to get it done. Hello? Stop thinking. When you got to, you got to know. Knowing this. Well, God's just trying to make me a better person. God's just trying to make me stronger in my faith. God's just testing me. I'm going to go along with him. I'm going to pass this thing. Amen. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. See, that's what we need. We need some more patience. Oh, boy. I told Kelly one time. She, I said, uh, you know, I need to start praying for some more patience. She said, no, you don't. Because if you pray for patience, God's going to give you opportunities to exercise it. And he will. But that word also means endurance. Being able to stand up under the load. You know, some people but some people take pride in the fact that in their in their secular job that they can endure, they can endure better than anybody else and get it done. Amen? Well, guess what? It don't take Superman. It don't take a muscle man. It don't take a genius. It takes somebody that's willing to exercise their crazy faith in Jesus Christ and know that when, when, you're, when, when you are tested and tried, your faith worketh patience or endurance in your life. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? But let patience, let endurance have her perfect work that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When you're walking by your crazy faith and not by the side of your eyes, you ain't got nothing to worry about. So God's going to supply off your needs according to his riches and glory. First Peter, uh, uh, First Peter 5.10 says, But the God of all grace, who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, it's just for a season. After you suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Nobody likes the struggles. Nobody likes the struggles. 
Nobody likes the test. Those are hard places to be. Hello? Yeah, I've never heard anybody. Oh, Lord, send me one more struggle. Oh, Lord, send me one more tear. Send me one more trial. I've never heard anybody say that. Never. But, but you know what? It is for you good because not only will it strengthen you, but it will help you. It will help benefit everyone around you when they see the way you're walking by faith and not by sight. It encourages them. See, God uses us during those testing, testing and trials during those struggles. God uses us to influence others, to help draw others. When, when they see us walking by crazy faith and not by sight, they look up and say, i got to have some of that. And they begin to depend on God completely. Nobody likes to struggle. Nobody likes to test. But God uses it to encourage other people. Psalm 34, 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. Are you blessing the Lord at all times? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall, uh, shall hear thereof and be glad. When people see you standing up, they see you enduring, they see you persevering, they see you walking in patience, they see you walking in crazy faith, it helps draw them to the Lord. It says in Psalm 69, 32, the humble shall see it and be glad, and your heart shall live that see God. Crazy faith. Crazy faith, church. Crazy faith trusts God so completely that despite the difficult or overwhelming circumstances, you prevail through Christ Jesus. Christ, crazy faith calls on the name of the Lord when they're in trouble and when they're in need. Matthew 14, 30-31, But when he saw the wind was boxed, when Peter saw the wind was boxed, he was afraid. I want you to be honest with yourself right now. I want you to be honest with God. See, God knows. God knows. You can't fool God. Some of you are walking in fear right now. Some of you are afraid because you see, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. I'm not going to lie with you. In the night watches when I'm laying there and my, and my, and my, and my chest is hurting, and I can't breathe. I'm struggling for breath. It's easy to let fear creep in. And there's some of you right now in situations in your life that you don't understand and you don't know. You're in a struggle. And you're letting fear cloud your mind. You're letting fear take over in your life. You're letting fear draw you away from God. You let, and that fear leads to doubt. And doubt ties out here. You can't fear. You can't be afraid. You, you've got to trust God completely. When Peter saw that wind with bosses, when Peter saw those waves, when he saw that wind, when he saw everything that was going on around him, he was beginning to sink. Now I want to draw your attention to that word beginning. He was beginning to sink. But then he cried out, Lord, save me. He cried out to the Lord for his help. And Jesus stuck out his hand Amen. and called him. When you cry out in crazy faith, Jesus will catch you. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? He'll catch you. He'll put his arms around you. He'll, he'll lift you up. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is saved. Are you running into Jesus? Are you running to him? Is he, is he where your dependency is? You see, Jesus will help you in your time of doubt and struggle. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, he's telling you to come to him. But why do we ignore him? Hello? Run to Jesus. Psalm 55, 16 uh, says, for, But as for me, I will call upon the name of the Lord. Hello. I will call upon God. And my greatest hour of need, I will call upon God. And the Lord shall save me. Are you calling upon God? Are you looking to Him? The Apostle Paul put it this way in his book, in his letter to the Philippians church, when he said these words, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Verse number 19 said, But my God shall supply for all my need, all your need, according to his riches in glory. Now, church, we need to get serious right now. We need to get honest with each other right now. We need to get honest with ourselves right now. Where is your dependency? Do you have crazy enough faith this morning to lay it all at the foot of the cross? Whatever your problem may be, you can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. Because ignoring it's not going to make it go away. Yeah. Only thing ignoring it is going to do is make it worse. You can't ignore that problem. You can't ignore that struggle. You can't ignore that situation. You can't ignore what's going on in your body. You got to trust God. You got you got to confess it. You got to acknowledge it before Him, and call upon the name of the Lord, and He'll bring it to pass. Amen. You got to call upon the name of the Lord. And your crazy faith will see that storm diminish. Your crazy faith will see the clouds roll away and the sun shine once again in your life. Your crazy faith will carry you through that valley of the shadow of death, but you will not fear any evil because his rod and his staff, they comfort you. He calls you out to watch the Savior. He called you out to see you be overcome. He's called you out to show his power and glory in your life and to see you succeed. And you'll walk with you. Are you willing to have crazy faith today? Are you willing to let your crazy faith see that storm diminish? Matthew 14, 32 says this. And when they came into the ship, the wind ceased. Why? Because Peter trusted in Jesus. So you trusted in Jesus today. I know it's hard. I'm not making light of your situation. I'm not making light of your struggle. I'm not making light of your test or your trial. But you have everything you need today to overcome through Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this, but thanks be to God who gives me the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. You are more than a conqueror through Him who loves you. Greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Are you, do you have crazy enough faith this morning to trust Jesus for your situation? Do you have crazy enough faith this morning to watch God move in your life? Quit waiting on feeling better. Quit waiting until you feel him to do it. Right now, right now in front of God, say, Lord, right now I place all my crazy faith in you. I trust in you. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm delivered in Jesus' name. I'm provided for in Jesus' name. I have all I need in Jesus today because I got crazy faith. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. There's nobody looking around. This is your time with God. Will you exercise your crazy faith this morning? I don't know what you need. I know what I need. I need God just to touch my old heart and to heal it. I just need God to reach down and give me a good night's rest. I just need Jesus. I know what Brother James needs. James, Brother James told me back there, he said, I, I, I don't receive right here in Jesus' name. See, that's crazy faith. Will you do that this morning? Will you come to this altar and say, Lord, I got crazy faith to receive what you have for me right now? I don't know what your need is, but God does. These altars are open. I ask you to take a step of faith today. And I ask you to come. There may be some sitting in here. You've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. Today is the day to do so. There may be some of you sitting in here today. You've fallen away from the Lord. Now it's time to come back. He'll restore you today. And there may be some of you sitting here. You just need a little encouragement. Whatever you'll need, these altars are open. I'm going to ask you to stand. And I'll ask you to come. Won't you come?
Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul again. I hope you enjoyed today's message. It has encouraged and drawn you ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there may be some of you out there today that's made a decision of faith. That is the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's so simple to do today. The Bible teaches us that if we'll just confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you can call upon him right now by saying this simple prayer of faith. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. Right now, Lord, I turn from sin and self, and I turn to you, Jesus, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, I give you all authority, control, and care of my life. Be my Lord and Savior forevermore. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you just become a blood-bought, born-again child of God. And we would love to hear your decision here at Albany Family Worship Center. And here's how you can contact us. You can write us at Albany Family Worship Center, 3024 Kensington Court, Albany, Georgia, 31721. You can send us an email, and our email address is my afwc at gmail.com that's myafwc at gmail.com or you can call us at 229-434-0342 we're looking forward to hearing from you today and we would love for you to come and visit we'd love to meet you and the family have a blessed day and always remember this jesus loves you <music>